Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Abbas, and with me here today is Team 19043, Silas, from Iyashi, Romania. They built a completely new robot for the Maryland Tech Invitational, submitted a 252 points, perfect 1 plus 5 match, have a 272 unpenalized, full 30 point, or 30 cone match, just absolutely killing it on the competition field today, and I can't wait to jump into this robot on Behind the Bot. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. Head on over to SOLIDWORKS.com sponsorships to choose from desktop, cloud apps, or both to design your robot. You guys built a completely new robot for the Maryland Tech Invitational, so walk me through the thinking behind that. Why did you guys do it? And we'll talk about how it turned out next. Uh, after our last performance as, at the Romanian Red Regionals, we realized that the Extendobot was just not the play for us. Uh, mostly because the margin of error was too high and we didn't do anything, uh, was too low, sorry. Mm -hmm. And we didn't do anything to mitigate that. So we just worked on that and also made really fast mechanisms and got to this. Yeah, and so, you know, with this robot, like the Romanian Nationals was back in like March 12th or something, I think. And so obviously you had seen a lot of designs behind that. You know, we had seen some one plus tens out there, some really high matches. So deciding to go for this robot was obviously a very conscious decision. So why did you go for this design? And if you could do it again, is there anything you would change? Uh, we went for this because we really liked, the, uh, the first thing we really looked at was the cone guide. That was something we didn't see a lot of teams do really well mm -hmm. and we thought we could do it, uh, we could do it better. So we just integrated everything into the bumpers of the drivetrain and it, it works really well because we can just slam into the wall and pick up cones immediately. Yeah, no, of course. And, you know, I'll jump real quick into the cone guide on the back of your robot also for the deposit. It's really, really wide. So let's throw some numbers out there. How wide is it? You know, how, how misaligned can you be and can you still deposit uh, a cone successfully? So it is 300 millimeters wide, as wide as the robot. And it was really good because it lets us do almost everything in autonomous. It, we can line straight lines within the stack and the pole and still hit it every time. And yeah. that's exactly what we do. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. So there's so much going on. Let's jump right into the drivetrain talk to me about it you know you mentioned the cone guides on the front uh, you know what's new with this drivetrain anything you think is really really clever our drivetrain is very compact as you can see we have lots of mechanism inside of it we actually have the virtual forward we have actually have the virtual forward and lift all integrated into the same drivetrain and we have the four four wheel motors uh, right under here yeah you can no, also see the odometry yeah i mean drivetrain absolutely fantastic another really really fast part of your robot is that motor v4b so walk me through that why you decided to go with the motor on it and how the design progressed Okay, so when I first designed this, we weren't really deciding upon using motors, so I made a design compatible with both servos and motors. So when we first started testing, we used 400, 435 RPM motors, which were kind of unreliable because we couldn't pick up cones from stacks. So after that, we switched to, switched to servos, and uh, they worked well, but they were slower, much slower, and we broke them very easily. And going back to motors, with 312 RPM motors, we managed to make it work. And now the V4B is so fast, we do a 0 0.4 second transfer time. Yeah, I mean, just look at that. That's insane. So two questions there. One, how quickly was this robot developed? You know, you went through three major changes for that motor V4B. How long did you spend on making this entire new robot? Uh, the first iteration of this bot was right after Romanian Nationals. We wanted to go to NTI and we started building a boat for the submission. It actually took me two days to cut it and then we built it the next week. Wow. We, man <laughs> we managed to do the submission in two weeks, like right the last day we managed to get a 252 score. And then during Worlds, well, uh, where Worlds was happening, I started cutting this new boat, which kind of took a whole week. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And so my second question over there was, can you give us a uh, rundown of the gearbox you have for your V4B, you know, starting from the motor, going all the way to that arm, how do all the belts and chains and everything work? Okay, uh, the, so there are some motors geared with uh, the new go build up bevels, which are mod 0.5 millimeter. And they go on a central uh, shaft, which goes to another belt on the side, on each side that then goes to the virtual four bar. Yeah, it goes through 
three stages. I think. <laughs> yeah, there's also an encoder on the central shaft that, which is a lot more precise than the modern encoders. Yeah, and is it an absolute encoder or a relative encoder? Uh, it's an it's a relative encoder. Okay, from Rev, so yeah. you just have to reset it every match. Uh, uh, right we don't actually have to reset it every match. If the robot is still turned on, it just remembers the position. Of course, of course, that's fantastic. So now going into your claw, let's talk a little bit about the claw design and then also the sensors you have behind it because I saw that automated pickup. It's yeah. so fast. So uh, the claw is a, a part we spent a lot we spent a lot of time on. So you can see, you can clearly see the bearings. These are directly these bearings are directly put on the tray printer as it prints. Wow! And it's it it works really cool. You can pick uh, cones up from a really big distance, and also if you don't pick up them up well, it will just shoot them out instead of picking up wrongly. So transfers are either you transfer or you transfer without a cone. Mm -hmm. And it works really well. Yeah, and so let's talk about the sensor you have in there. I see something, so walk me through what it is, how it works. Okay, so it's a brake brim, brim sensor. It's here and here, yeah. And when the cone enters, it just... Yeah, it, it just and, breaks yeah. the beam and then, exactly. you know, you go from there. All right, so let's jump right into your transfer now. It's also just, you know, everything on this robot is so fast. So let's jump into the transfer, talk about, you know, how it works, anything super special you have going on. And, you know, go ahead. Yeah. So. Our virtual floorboard has uh, three degrees of freedom. The first one is actually the virtual, and the second one is a pivot rotating the uh, arm around. And then, if you can turn this off. Okay. Uh, and the third one is this one rotating the cone back to the robot. So using all th these three motions, we can uh, do the transfer. And a really cool thing about our transfer is because we can't score on lows with the deposit currently, we can just score on lows like this. Yeah, this is so cool. You know, I've seen this in matches. You guys will just stay right where you are, just flip around right from the substation. It works so, so well. So I have to ask, was this something you designed? Like you knew this is something you were going to be able to do or was it just a happy accident you found while you were building the robot? Uh, during the first iteration of our robot for the MTA submission, I, we actually found out about this right after the submission. It would have helped a lot in there but it was really good to know for the next iteration. And currently we do a 0 0.4 uh, low deposit time. Yeah, and so, yeah, you mentioned the deposit. That's the last thing I want to talk about. Walk me through it really quick, uh, and, you know, we'll wrap things up. Okay. So, uh, as you can see, the lift motors are mounted in a really strange way. We want to get them that way so it's so uh, very close to the center of the robot and also as low as possible. So the routing of the string is pretty complicated. It goes from these pulls back to here, then through other two pulleys on the side, and then uh, to the slides, which is pretty funny. We <laughs> also call those parts sketches, which <laughs> is just because how they look. Yeah. And so let's see, let's see one deposit. I mean, your lift is just so incredibly fast. I'm sure everybody's interested, uh, you know, in seeing it move. Go. Yep, and we'll see, put it down. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, this robot is just so crazy. I mean, you guys do so much driver practice, and it, we can see it on the field. You're just so fluid. I know right now you guys are three and one currently, four more matches tomorrow. We'll see how they go. I'm sure you guys are looking forward to them, hopefully end up as a captain. But everybody, this is Team 19043, Silas Robotics, just incredible robot. Thank you for this interview. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Abbas. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. Head on over to SOLIDWORKS.com sponsorships to choose from desktop, cloud apps, or both to design your robot. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.